let's start by asking, you know, just general, because what's been your toughest moment? This one, obviously. I didn't want to say that. <laughs> Is there any point, you know, on a film, I know maybe in the play, that's been really particularly difficult? How? Um, you know, well, unfortunately, there's not one. I think I'm just flooded with many, many, many. Um, Although thankfully, I think I repressed them. It's a bit like childbirth, but obviously, and that's what happens every time you start a job. You think, what on earth am I doing here? And I can't actually act, and yet somebody's employed me again. <laughs> and, and you know, it's that first day itis, and then obviously you forget it because then you accept another job. You know, so I mean, there are many, many times. Which, and then, and then I watch the film. To be honest, I think for me, the most excruciating thing is watching myself and something because then it's a failure of everything that I've even attempted to. Because I, there's no way that you're going to paint. It's like painting a picture blind, and then you think, and I, you know, and then you look at it, and you, you take the thingy off, the blindfold off, and unfortunately, it's nothing at all that what you intended. Do you watch daily this when you're no, shooting? No, absolutely not. Oh, you don't. No, no. Hmm. Well, how about everybody else? What's what's been your your single toughest moment, Amy? How about you? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I, like, it's hard to to just boil it down to one moment. Um, I try to keep, I mean, I really do, it's so generic, but I really try to keep things in perspective because even my hardest mo moment on a movie set is really, I'm on a movie set, I'm working. I think for me it was much harder before I was working, so my hardest moments have a lot to do with being unemployed, which I'm very familiar with. Um, How long did that last? Um, I mean, it's always on and off. I'm unemployed right now. <laughs> um, it varies. Yeah, it varies. But I was, I was in LA for about, um, Probably six years before, seven years before Junebug. So that was in my 30s. That's quite something. So I kind of thought, you know, I was... And what did you do to get by? Uh, I did a lot of... Uh, I, did, I did films. And I did a lot of day players. Um, guest stars. <laughs> street, street walking, amateur night. Whatever I had to do to get by, really. So just... just uh, I worked. I was a working actor. But I just wasn't... Um, when you're not working process. now, what do you do? Well, now I'm taking care of my daughter. I have a new baby, so that's what I'm doing. It's pretty full time. But before, I just felt sorry for myself. <laughs> <laughs> I would say that's what I did when I was working. There, was there a moment when you thought maybe this isn't going to happen? Oh yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, Did you ever consider sort of giving it up? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, not not as a reality, but sort mm -hmm. of as like a what would my life look like? Um, not for any good reason, mostly just self, <laughs> just, just, you just think about it. I think that's what's great about being an actor is you really do examine every type of life. So I, I fantasize about also what if I quit and became a teacher or what if I, but the good thing is, is I get to embody all these different characters and get to experience different lives. So, so I, I think I'll stay as long as they'll have me. <laughs> do you think that there, that are there aspects you like and don't like about acting and actually the work of acting? being a professional full-time actress? Yeah, I, don't, I feel very vulnerable. I don't like that. I think that's, <laughs> I don't like it at all. Um, you're very subject to people's opinions. Yeah. You, it's hard to sort of have a tough skin and a vulnerable heart. It's kind yeah. of, it's a delicate balance. So that's probably the thing I don't like is, you know, you know when it doesn't go well. You know, yeah, you don't need someone throwing it in your face. It's so refreshing, isn't it, to sit here and really talk, to, and hear someone else say what I think we're all probably feeling, and yeah. that's really. What, what do you feel vulnerable about? The same thing. I mean, you know, I think as actors, we just lay our heart on the line, and and um, it's just part of inhabiting a, a, another person and a character, and um, sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. And like you said, we know when it doesn't. We don't need to kind of be beat over the head with it. Um, you know. Do you know when it doesn't? I mean, do you, and yeah. at what point? You know, during? Yeah, during? well, I think, you know, it's like, I think when you're making a film, it's like you're, you know, um, you can't see it as a whole until it's done. Um, so you're hoping that it's working and it can feel really good. And then when it comes together, it might not work. And, it's, a, it's such a collaboration, and um, really, I think we're only as good as our weakest link. And so, 
when it's up there, you may be the weakest link or something else might be the weakest link. And it, you know, Clint said something that I love, which is he said, you always aim for the bullseye, but you don't always hit it. Mm -hmm. And I just try and hold that when, you yeah. know, when it doesn't work, you just say, well, we tried our best because everyone's trying their best. And that's mm -hmm. what's hard is that you see everyone put their heart and soul into it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so. Have you ever done that and then been disappointed in the results? Oh, yeah. I mean, I think that's part of being an artist, you know, is you're always trying something new and um, it just doesn't always work. And you don't want to play it safe. I mean, I don't. I don't. I always want to try and mix it up. And, and that's when you do fall down. And, you know, it's nice when you have the people around you that help pick you back up mm -hmm. and brush you off and say, it's all right. You know, it's all right. You tried. At least you tried. How, how involved do you get in, in the bits before the acting begins, like the writing process, giving notes on the screenplay? Well, I think it really depends on your director, you know, and how they like to work. Some like to really rehearse a lot and, you know, others don't. Like Clint didn't rehearse at all. We didn't read one line. Um, Tony Goldwyn, who I just did Conviction with, he, um, you know, we just read through our scenes with the other actor. And anything that didn't sound authentic, we just kind of scrapped or made better. Pamela Gray was also with us during all those, um, the screenwriter, um, when we would all read this, the scenes and, and we just hear it out and feel it out. And um, it's a great process, you know, I think. I was interested in that, just reading about, you know, you working on Kids Are All Right, that you'd encouraged Lisa Cholodenko to move the film in a much lighter direction. Well, how, how did you do that? I wouldn't say that. I would say I just didn't want it to be earnest. Yeah. I just didn't. And, uh, you know, she's also kind of too generous when she talks about me and my contributions. I mean, I did, I do remember, I, a lot of, I just don't remember exactly what I said or didn't say, but I do remember <laughs> not wanting it to be uh, too earnest. And that's, uh, that's very hard. It, it, it's, it's easier to do that, and that's why we've all done that and we've all made that mistake. So to, I didn't want it to be idealized or a kind of, you know, the, the noble couple, you know, rising against the, the, the uh, situation they're in. So, yes, I, I did think it was important that it was, <clears throat> that it was, uh, it's, a, it's such a serious subject and that it could be funny, and the more serious something can be, the more, uh, hilarious it can be and those things can coexist if you if you're lucky and you get it right and the, and the writing was really good there were just like little things that I I kind of knew that maybe we could tweak a little bit and it could um, take it out of it trying to be noble in any way do you prefer comedy do you prefer drama uh, no what a good question do I, I don't know I don't and you know I I have played scenes that I thought were serious that were people laughed at <laughs> that's good writing you know and if the writing is good you don't really have to I mean you know part of you you, you know often knows and certainly if it's a play you know because you either get the laugh or you don't which is horrible yeah. but you begin to think I want that laugh you know <laughs> but in the movies it's in the movies it's different um, but sometimes you do know, oh yes, this is an amusing situation, or this is going to be funny, or this could be funny. But then other times there's a kind, if the writing is very good, then you just play the truth of it. And of course that's what they teach you about comedy, that's, what, that's the first lesson of comedy is that you're absolutely serious about what you believe and what you're doing, and the comedy comes out of something else. So. But if you just cracked up doing a comic scene and then had to... Constantly. <laughs> yeah. That yeah. was the vibrator. Uh, I haven't seen it, but was it a vibrator or something? Was that fun? Or was it, was <laughs> it actually right, really? Yes. Was there a vibrator? Well, it's well, it's or maybe I fantasized that. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was Where's real. Was no. <laughs> <laughs> we were watching the gay porn. In oh, the gay porn, porn. Yeah. yeah. Well, well really. I, I wish, I, I don't know how everybody else feels, I wish that sex scenes were just hilarious <laughs> and funny <laughs> and great, it's not like that generally, <laughs> except I have actually, no that's not, that's not true, I, I have fun. done, I've done comedic, and that scene actually is comedic, but it's not really comedic for me, the mm -hmm. character, so I, I didn't really get the giggles, 
Although I have gotten the giggles terribly on um, on sets, you know, sitting there in, in bed with. But it's usually you know, when you're not meant to. I mean, what? usually when it's not funny. I mean, that's the it's, that's, yeah. it's the classic thing. You just can't laugh, and then you you know, you're going to be letting everything down if you're not, you know. And it's insanely sad, you know. Or, <laughs> right. it's, it's, it's awful. Check off. In your I, I don't even do a lot of um, you know. Um, giggle type movies <laughs> but um sometimes in the 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 release and the dramatic movies that i do the actors just kind of will fall apart and start laughing at some point just to kind of make it do you, through do, would you like to do more yeah mm. i would love it do you think well so why don't you i i, I can't find the scripts mm. you know they're few and far between i don't know about you guys but i i, I don't know i have a really hard time finding you know, I think comedy for, and especially for women, not to just, you know, but I, I think it's, there's a lot of comedy um, for, 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 for men, you know. Um, yeah. There are a lot of roles for men. I mean, this is one of the first years where we've had mm -hmm. an abundance of people in great, you know, women in great roles. I mean, last year there were so few, it's just appalling, you know. Mm -hmm. um, I think there, you know, everyone talks about that, but I think there are just few. I mean, there are just not very many good parts for everyone, mm. you know, and it's always the same. No, it's not the same bunch, but kind of. But, um, but there aren't many very But in England, parts. there are better parts, because you've got the... I mean, not that I'm part of the bunch, but... Uh, but, but, but in England, you've got... Oh, I knew I'd say it. Tim said, just keep storm. In England, you've got, the, you've got the theatre, you've got the BBC, you have... Yeah, and you've got a, radio, which is great in parts. Yes. Also, it doesn't matter what you look like. Yeah. You get to play against type, which is fantastic. Mm. But it, on the whole, to read a good script, it's like, the, and you know immediately, it doesn't, mm. you don't have to read page two, you just know, okay, this is going to, you're in good, good hands, I think, mm. don't you think? You know? What did you so, think, Natalie, when you got the script for Black Swan? Yippee. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, diet. No, I was, I was already, exactly, diet. <laughs> oh, no food, I don't know, so, oh, here we go, bulimia, uh, good luck better. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> um, yeah, it was actually I was actually committed to the film before the script um, because uh, Darren and I started talking about it like mm. nine years ago when I was still in college. Wow. Yeah, and wow. so wow. so he had the whole idea for everything, but that was really an instance where the script was very much a blueprint, and it really taught me how much direct I mean Nicole actually said it to me a long time ago when we were doing Cold Mountain I totally remember that you said always do always choose by director because you're always guaranteed you never know how the movie's going to turn out but you're always guaranteed an interesting experience if the mm -hmm. director and I like always had that in my head and it's so true because it's like even when the script is great I've had the experience yeah, yeah. where sometimes someone can really botch it um, yeah. and um and that really it, it does take sort of a visionary and it does, your experience can, if your experience is worthwhile, you always have that no matter how it turns out. Yeah. So, so nine years ago, Darren talks to you and then why, why the delay? It takes a long time to yeah, get laziness. money and especially for, um, you know, movies that can't be put into sort of genre. Or, um, and he did other stuff, I did other stuff. Just Did you see different versions of the script along the way? Um, yeah, uh, yeah, there were, I mean, I actually, the other day someone asked me for something, like for an au auction or something, so I was looking at the old scripts to mm. see if I could sign it, and all the names were completely <laughs> different, and the lines were just, it was sort of like um, telenovela lines, it was kind <laughs> of great, but um, yeah, yeah, there were very, very different versions of the script. What was the hardest thing about playing that role, because it's a pretty intense part? Oh my god. Um, well, it was the first thing. I mean, I guess you've done it a lot, but I've never done anything um, so that has such physical demands as well as the emotional stuff. And to have to be training like while you're working and also um, during the work itself to be like warming up before you do a scene. It was kind of great discipline, but, but very unusual for me. It was the first time I'd ever had anything like that. Is it fulfilling in that way? Or yeah, well, so always, I think, when you yeah. work hard, it's like, you're like, wow, I can do a lot more yeah, than I thought I could. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but, but it's not, it wasn't... Um, <clears throat> you got any scars? Um, no, <laughs> luckily, no. Not from that one. From other things all the time. Just <laughs> clumsy life. Just emotional Lots scars. Of scars. Yeah. Yes, actually. I know. Got it. Do doing roles like that change you? I mean, do you find your view of the world different when, you know, I mean, this is a an extraordinary sort of plunge into darkness. Mm. Uh, did it 
do you come back to seeing the world differently? Oh, definitely. I mean, I definitely see skinny people as sad now. Yeah. <laughs> I think you're so sad to be skinny. I didn't think you were going to say that. <laughs> I didn't think you were going to say that. I used to be like, ooh, wow, I want to look like a model too. And now I'm like, they're sad. <laughs> I don't have the discipline to be like skinny, like truly skinny. A few months, a few months, it's it's possible. But now Meanwhile, while everyone watching this is probably like, what are you two talking about? I know, so I know. No, we're thin. totally thin. We're totally thin. I know, I know we're that. I'm not saying. Thin, but there's a difference the between emaciated yeah, like, yeah, ballet yeah, kind yes, of body. Yes, yes, that's true. Um, no, I mean, you're you're right. <laughs> Perspective again. <laughs> what was the hardest thing you've had to physically for a role? Me? Yeah. Um, I, I got a bad injury when I was doing Moulin Rouge where I tore my cartilage in my knee. Um, but it was that dancer mentality where you keep dancing. Yeah. What were you doing? Which, movie, which, so. which bit? Were you it was like 3 a.m. in the morning. It was one of those things where I'm thinking, mm, I'm so tired and I sh probably shouldn't do another one in these heels. But okay, yeah, yeah, one more take. This will be it. What was and I just it? fell and tore my knee up. Jeez. Didn't you also break a rib? I broke a rib on that too. Yeah, that, that's not any me. big deal. <laughs> the, the knee was bad, but the rib. No, but that was in rehearsal because so oh, you have God. time to recover. But um, but the knee was bad because the knee then was for the next couple of years. Really yeah. kind of, I the ended up having to. How did you doing, finish the movie? Well, luckily we had about a couple of weeks, and I just took um, those oh, cortisone yeah. injections. Yeah. You just yeah. went on heroin. <laughs> But, you know, and bads change certain things and, you know, it was and nobody's fault. Here. It was yeah. just, it, I mean, it, it was me just not thinking and coming downstairs, you know. I think there is a point that you, you're responsible for yourself and sometimes because there's so many people around and it costs so much to keep a crew going, you think, oh, I've got it. And I kind of like the heroism as if we're being real heroes, you're doing our own, <laughs> you know. And it's for, like, oh, you're sitting, you're like doing workshop. But actually there is a point when you should say, you know what, this isn't going to, but it takes a lot of courage to say, you know what, we should stop here. Yeah. yeah, and also I think when you're so in the role, you know? you're in that um, almost like in a, a high, like yeah. it's a it's a drug. So there's no way I was going to stop. Yeah. 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 Have any of you actually said stop or enough or? Um, I think what I was scared. scared. <laughs> I did. I'm yeah. scared. I don't want to do it. <laughs> You've said that. I yeah, stopped. riding a horse. No. Oh, <laughs> you stopped. I did. It's so. Did I know. You, you look so surprised. Yeah. <laughs> if I tell you, it really is funny, and it's one of those moments where I was in full hilarity, thinking, how do they really think this is working? We were doing a, um, a shot outside, and we were working in Ireland, and we were, it was like, what was the film? it was called Leap Year, and it was like, tons of like, weather, it just weather all the time, and we were in this like, ridiculously strong wind all day long, people were getting eye injuries, and then it started raining. Well, when we started doing the coverage, or we started doing like this wide shot where I walked across the camera, it wasn't raining. And then they kept going, it was raining, and like by the end I was soaking wet and there was wind blowing, and I'm like, guys, I don't think this is gonna match. Like, my hair was completely drenched and I was like blue. Or and everyone else is like in these like, in their yeah. little things with like the their thing. eyes. Yeah, the crew is all covered up in like their In their parkas, and I'm in like, I'm in like a sweater and a pencil skirt and high heels and <laughs> walking going, guys, this isn't, I think we need to, like, I'm done. Like, can we, I wasn't like, it wasn't like we were going home or throwing a fit. It was pretty much like, guys, we have to, we're not going to get the shot. It's not going to happen. It's inter interesting you gave that advice, which is such wonderful advice, you know. And it's funny because I, uh, just, just before we came here, I was telling the call, I remember speaking to Anthony Minghella mm -hmm. about who, you know, I did a profile on, on her some time ago and he just loved you yeah. and um, what happens though, have you had a situation where you've had conflict with the director and then how do you resolve that? Had conflict? Mm -hmm. I don't think I've ever really had conflict, I mean I have the, um, I just become devoted, you know it's almost like a love affair for a certain period of time and then I walk away and go, oh, so what you was that? Have sex. <laughs> 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 what was I doing? No. <laughs> But I do have that nature when I work <laughs> that I just will, and I've had to have some, um, you know, where I, and particularly now because I'm my life is so good, I'm much more about, mm, do I really want to go there and not be as present for my husband and my daughter, because when I go there, I just yeah. like being yeah. in some different, different world. Yeah. And that's how do you so I don't have conflict with the director usually unless it's to 
stimulate and create something. And how do you <laughs> reconcile, you know, family and, and work? Do you... I don't know now. I mean, I don't have the, the pull in the way I used to. A lot of my work before was running from my life, which was... Um, you know, at times good and at times bad, but it was just what I was doing. My, my fantasy life was better than my real life, so now I don't... I, I suppose I'm just incredibly careful about the time because it is... Time is all we have. Forget it. I mean, that's the one thing you can't make any more of, so... Do you think having a kid changed that? Having Well, I had children when I was 25. Yeah. I think at this age, having a child and also... Yeah, I don't, I mean, in your 20s, it's very, very different. Life's very different. Mm -hmm. So in your 40s, it's a much more, it's like, hmm, I've got this amount of time left. How am I willing to spend it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I want to be very careful. Do you, Annette, do you feel that too? You're, you're pretty careful about the roles you choose. Is that because you've got the kids or, or are, you, are you less interested than you were in acting? I don't know, from the time I started having them, I remember the first time I was pregnant and I thought, and, and the desire to work went away, and the whole <laughs> obsession with that went away, and I thought, oh no, this is, this is very scary. But then I realized it comes back, it's a cyclical thing. I was just so absorbed in being pregnant and having babies and everything. So no, what, now I feel just incredibly fortunate that I can stop and start in my work. A lot yeah. of people can't do that. So I feel very lucky. Um, and the, yeah, I find it's so, that what you just said was so perfect, the way you put it, when you have a good life. I mean, even with a very good life and children and a husband and all of that, there is still something about the process, mm -hmm. you know, when you're an actor, actress, yeah. that you love. And yeah. that is something that isn't fulfilled by no. You know, doing the other stuff, which is fabulous and I adore. So I, I love that process. But I don't, um, but I think I am, I am very, yeah, I am very, um, but I'm kind of selective anyway. And also just in terms of where I can go because of my kids and what their needs are. And every time I, I read about somebody going off and doing something, an actress, particularly with kids, I always think, how are they doing that? Yeah. That person's like, well, that kid isn't that kid in school, and then yeah. you know, that's what I because I because uh, you know that. So I've been lucky. The things I've been able to do away. I mean, I think it's really great for children to be able to travel, and my children have been able to go places and do things. But when they get older, it, it's trickier mm -hmm. because you can't just pack them up, and so you know you you try to do it in the summer, or you know, and so <laughs> you. Um, you have to uh, try to, you know, the whole thing about balance too, you know, that always sounds so good, having a balanced life and balancing, but you know, creativity is really about excess. Mm -hmm. And, and when, you, when you wanna make something, there's a kind of obsession that has to come with it in a healthy way, in a way that is intoxicating. You're engulfed by something. So, um, and I think that's one of the another one of the privileges mm. that we have that we get to do that in our work and and still, uh, you know, have the children. But there's no question the practicalities of, you know, going away, you know, for me are are just difficult right now. And I I don't do it like I would if I didn't have children. For sure. Is it a role you've had to turn down because you yes. wouldn't go away? Yeah. With a you re deep you regret? No. Oh really? No, I no, I can't. I'm th I don't know. I remember a while ago thinking, oh yeah, there was that one thing I didn't do, and I, but now I can't remember what it was. <laughs> yeah. No. I is, there, is there any role that any of you have not got that you wish you had? <laughs> oh sure. Yeah. Oh sure. Yeah. Which one? I don't know. I guess it's uh, it, it's Fox that yeah. This is the other. I was up for. Um, it's a Bertolucci movie, the, the Sheltering Sky. Oh. And I was up for it for months, you know, like sometimes happens. Yeah. And Deborah Winger is in the movie, and it's a beautiful movie. I, I, it's, you know, incredibly beautiful. But I, I, yeah, I started meeting him, and it went over a period of months, and I started, started reading all the books, and I read all about Jane Bowles, and I read mm -hmm. about Paul Bowles, and I got myself so, but, you know, I didn't get the part, but. I, you know, it's, it's not something that I've ever really mentioned before or really thought that much about, but I pulled it up for you. There you go. Useful. What about you? Um, 
I'm, of course. I mean, I think we read scripts, and I, I like to read things even when they're not offered to me. I just ask my agents to send me, really? yeah, material. Yeah, <laughs> well, <laughs> no, I just feel like, I just feel like for me, um, I think finding really compelling um, original work is few and far between. Yeah, and in, and instead of just waiting for something to come my way, I ask them to send me the material. I want to know the writers that are out there. And um, I'm, I have a production company now, and so that's also part of that. But I was doing this even before I had my production company. And, you know, I just, I want to know what is out there. Um, you know, I don't ever want to rest on my laurels and just kind of sit back and say, oh, we'll see it comes my way. You know, I want to fight for things that I believe in and that I want to be a part of. And um, um, you know, there was a script that I fell in love with just back in August that was sent to me. Um, it's a um, first-time director, um, you know, but a well-known writer. And I read this script, and I said, I want to meet you. And he was like, oh, wow, okay, great. I went in, and I didn't get it. You know, I, 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 I didn't get it. And um, so I... who did? <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell us. <laughs> And I, I mean, like, do I not reveal. <laughs> Tell us who it was. Yeah, initials. <laughs> Come on, let's guess. Um, Come on. You know what? I mean, Tell us the director. Yeah. Did you know who it was? Who's the writer? It was. Um, it's Alex Kurtzman, and his script is. You know, he did. You know, Alex Kurtzman. He uh, Kurtz Kurtzman and Ortsy. He, they did all those you know, big movies, um, Star Trek and Transformers and stuff. And, it, and oh. you wouldn't think that this was his movie. Um, he, you're like, oh. no, I don't know. <laughs> I, um, I saw Star Trek. I actually, I didn't see it. I, I didn't see it. I'm, I'm not a real big science fiction fan. And, but he, this script is a beautiful story about um, brother, a brother and a sister. And it's um, Amy, you got it, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> Just admit it. What? Did you read it? Did you like it? Are you kidding? I'm not getting into this. <laughs> Amy got the role. Amy will no, be playing the role of I want Let me just say, I did not, I'm not doing it. I knew, I knew that. What, what were oh you going to say? I am dying now. Yeah, this is so intriguing. No, because I, I don't, we don't normally talk about this. This is always the stuff that everyone yeah, sits say, Yeah, yeah, they don't, don't say anything yeah. that you don't want to say. Here's what However, I will say. However, we want to know the dirt. <laughs> <laughs> I felt that at this time, with my daughter being a baby, yes. I couldn't. I'll get sad. I couldn't go there emotionally and still be there for her in the way I felt an infant deserved. You mean like it's sobbing and screaming and then like, going home? I, I go there all the way. It's hard to let go of something that you think mm. is really good and that you feel emotional attachment to. Yeah. Sorry, guys, I'm so tired. <laughs> <laughs> See, it was a good script. Sure it was. <laughs> no, actually, it was a great script. But it was. It was good. I felt that this was like my first career slash mom just decision where if I went to work every day and played this girl and came home, she's not going to have, I'm not going to have the You're experience. You're going to damage your job. Yeah. No, but I mean, I will miss, I will miss this Out next year, year and no, I'm never no, no, going to no, get that true. back. Oh, and yeah. if I'm lucky, there will be a beautiful script that will come at some oh, other point oh, in my yeah. career, oh, yeah. but I'm never getting that time back with my hey, infant daughter. No. So I, no, it wasn't even about the time <clears throat> or being away, it was about where I would have to go emotionally and I felt that... Nicole, did you feel that way with Rabbit Hole, with the sort of emotional journey of that character, having children? Well, I started developing that way before I was pregnant. So, and Rabbit Hole is a is this young child. So, and then I didn't want to do it when I had Sunday. I was like, oh, well, I'm not going to make that. Mm -hmm. And then it just kept coming back, orbiting around, and we kept working on the script and. And then like somehow I was there doing it. You know, it was one of those things where, and we raised the money. I mean, that was it was such a drag up the mountain kind of film. Because you won the produ you won the produce on it too. How, how involved were you with? I raised the money. I was like begging <laughs> Aaron Eckhart to do it. Yeah, it was like literally learned how to. I didn't want to be able. I wanted to be able to know how much every location cost and what we needed not to have, and I wanted to do it. I didn't want to just sort of. Say I was a producer. I wanted How to long did it take to raise the money? It took about a year. We had another director attached to it who was a much bigger director. Um, and then he pulled out to do a much bigger film. Oh. So then we lost that. And then, so then we went back and we ended up making it for people. So who was that? Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Careful, you And then we came up with John Cameron Mitchell, who can make films on the market. Why do people not want to talk about this? That, that's part of life. Directors drop out of projects. There's a certain etiquette. 
Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, like it was yeah. it's like the when, legend when, of it. The legend of it. Yeah. And 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 there are movies that I passed on that the actor who got the role was like it was meant for them. So fate works out the way it's supposed yeah. to. And to say, well, I was going to be in that takes kind of away from the person who was in it. I think that's how I feel. Too. I feel like so. if I'm not doing it, if I didn't get it, I wasn't meant to. And usually, I watch the film and realize. Oh well, that's not how I saw it at all, and it was really yeah, and how they it's really it so a blessing differently than you would have played yeah. it. And then I, I brought the other one up because it was something that wasn't offered to me that I really wanted, so I didn't feel as bad. Have you, what have you done, like, Natalie? What, have you had to fight for any particular role, and, and what do you do to fight for a role? I've fought for things that I didn't get, but <laughs> um, usually the things you get, I feel like people, I feel like a director usually knows mm. what they want, mm. and. If you're fighting for something, if they're like really vacillating for yeah. a long time, they usually don't know what they want, um, which is not a good sign ever. Um, but yeah, mm, I've I've true. fought for things. I I mean, I'm such like a nerdy school person that like I'll, you know, I've I've you know found documents and done research and like written notes and diaries and sent things and whatever. Wow. But I mean. Only, only for things I really wanted, and I never got it when I did that. Oh. So it's not a good method. I don't recommend it. <laughs> it's not a What's your biggest regret in in your careers? <laughs> you know, I, I I won't again name a name because that's disrespectful. <laughs> I won't name a name oh, no, or, I or a, but. <laughs> But you know, I just think that um, we know when mm. we maybe didn't want to be a part of something, but we were kind of coursed into mm. it. I think we've probably yeah. all done that. Yeah. And all we really have is our instinct. And uh, you know, we, we're with, we have to live with it. And the person that may have coursed us into it, you know, may never not even be in your life at that point when the movie comes out or whatever. Mm. And I think that that's what, my, what I regret is that when I don't trust my instincts in any part of my life, but especially in, in that creative process, because you can't be creative with someone else's vision. I, I mean, uh, who, who sees you in it, and you don't feel it. Yeah. I was just going to say, I regret not knowing how close a close-up's going to be, because I would have, like... <laughs> <laughs> you would have cleaned your teeth out? <laughs> I would have exfoliated better. <laughs> or something. There's a point where I ever watch something, I get like, why did somebody touch me up? And then I realize, oh no, I was going like, fuck off, fuck off. <laughs> Don't want anyone yet, and then you think, oh no, you, know, you should have just be cleared me up. You know, there's a close up that's like this close, yeah. like on a 40 foot screen, like here, and I was like, oh. Do you have any particular regrets? Regrets. Mm -hmm. I think it's that thing of like, I still relate to what Nicole has said and and that and Annette, that one. Sorry, my brain has gone over. Right. Right. Uh, but there is a certain and what and Amy said there is a certain perspective. I mean, once you're over 40, frankly, mm. and you've got and I do have thankfully a good life too. Mm. There's a certain perspective which is so I'm so grateful to have now mm. because um, I think there's a lot of baggage that you carry around when you and it's such a competitive industry this and I think. Um, so, you know, before, if you'd asked me that before I had the children and the rest of the life and, you know, and just basically be happy and, and not having to, you know, like escape from my bed because, um, you know, through fantasy of other parts, there was a part that I, and I was, and not only that, the, the actress in question did tell the whole world that I, um, I turned it down. It was very foolish because it, it made her. Um, <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> I know. I know. It's so amazing. What, what, yeah, you see, you're making it what so much it? better. No, 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 no. no, but it's weird. I had a different experience because Brain the Ways. And she's a brilliant actress. So I oh, gave Brain, what, the break. Oh, really? I did, I did. I did. I turned wow. down Brain the Ways. That was very wise. But <laughs> I wasn't ready to do that. And also, I had a completely yeah. different angle. And I met Lars, and I knew you've worked with him. But I had a very peculiar feeling of, of Lars. And I think he's. <laughs> <laughs> and I just didn't yes. feel comfy. Also, my father was very disabled. Oh, chronically that? disabled. So I found the whole story. I did not feel happy with a lot of it. Um, and I kind of, I felt she was being used a bit, this yeah. character. And also when she, when then it all becomes a bit of a, but I didn't realize this man was a, a visionary. I had no idea it was a visionary. I mean, he obviously was an amazing, but this was his first it film was. of note. So um, I wasn't, I just, I didn't feel confident. I mean, I it care. is an extraordinary, have you seen? But she was brilliant in it. So yeah, she she's, was, she's yeah. much more brilliant than I would have ever been. So, I, I, so it's okay. Have you seen? 
I'm so fine with it. It would have been a different film with you in it. Would? I mean, it would have been been totally different. And I think I would have been. I could have played that part now, but I couldn't have played that part then. Because In fact, shall we redo it? Because I'm better. <laughs> you know, no, I definitely think because I'm better. No, I'm, I'm definitely a slow developer. And now, finally, not that I know how I can do it, but I just am more confident as an actor. Then I was not. I was certainly not confident in my sexuality. It took me ages to, you know, get a handle on that. And it's still no, it's questionable. <laughs> <laughs> but, it's like, what do you mean by that? You know, just being comfy in my body and being mm. happy to be a woman. I was like, I've, I've always been a, you know, a late developer. So there are lots of parts that I was just not ready for because I was... Um, I've just been a slow starter. Mm. So, you know, the parts that I've met. There was nudity in that film, too. It was all about sex. Yeah, and she was having sex with everything. And the way it was <laughs> ready with that. everything, she was also very, very. She, Emily played it with a great innocence, but originally it was much more backward. Mm. I mean, really. So I just thought this. It read very pornographic, to be honest. Mm. When I thought, but I didn't know that Lars was, you know, yeah. was going to. You know. There is an amazing documentary that's made about. Him, I think it's called the Four Corrections or something. Have you seen it? It's wow, actually extraordinary. I've seen him. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've seen him. Well, it, I, I actually really like Lars. I just, do you? I still email him. But I don't think Emily did when she worked with him. I think it was a very difficult experience. Well, it was difficult, but I mean, creativity is difficult. Some people, I mean, people that are brilliant are difficult. They're going to, I mean, not always, well, but I don't, a, I don't a lot of they the should time. be mean. I mean, that's the But he can thing. be mean, absolutely. Like, yeah. And I that's really why. Don't I mean, he, he can be vindictive and all those yeah. things, but Lars says that about himself, and it's either you're going to go there or you're not, and it wouldn't have been right. I mean, there's times when I've chosen not to do things because yeah. I just didn't have a good feeling, mm-hmm. and maybe it's gone on to be an extraordinary piece of work. I wasn't meant to be in it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And also had other, you know, there's those moments in life where, yeah, I could have gone this way and I could have gone that way. Yeah. I went that way. And it's not it's a bad way. Yes. I mean, that's the thing. We're all, you know, obviously didn't go that but way. But creating was <laughs> fear. I mean, out of... It, that's what I find a little um, jarring now, the, the way information can be put out. Because I believe a set or a rehearsal room or anything requires um, protection. And whatever it takes to get a performance and to get a work of art or, it, you know, some sort of story told is what it takes and that should be protected. And I think now there's times when people tape things and put them on the web and all that yeah. stuff. And I find that terrifying for mm-hmm. our overall world because who knows what gets said to get it. And yeah. people that work together who are artistic realise that and forgive a lot. That's, mm-hmm. So to be privy to that is, I don't think it's right. But I think we're privy to way too much anyway now. We should oh, know yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, even as a journalist, I completely agree. It's just, it's, and, and, but, but we're, we're dealing in that world, you know, where... It will affect our, it will affect our movies ultimately. It will affect well, our One question for Helena, you mentioned the creative process. You've made a lot of films with Tim Burton, your partner. How is that dynamic different, just being together privately as well as professionally? Um, it's very different. Um, I mean, I did do a film with them before I slept with them, basically. <laughs> and it's very different. <laughs> it is. I mean, we now got the hang of it. We went through a really bad time on um, Sweeney Todd. Um, and we Which learned a lot as a result. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. But I didn't get one compliment. You know? <laughs> <laughs> from here, from here. Compliment. Yeah, yeah. No, he really had this whole thing of like, he didn't want to seem as if he was favoritizing me. So he'd go in the opposite direction, you know. So I was like, you know, so I had a, he still doesn't know this, but I actually had a really good relationship with, sorry, it's about everyone. Um, <laughs> the foot, the, the cinematographer, focus focus <laughs> <follow. laughs> I didn't have an intention, the focus <laughs> follow. So basically I could never yeah. ask for another take because Tim thought I was challenging his, um, you know, it wasn't a challenge, I just because I, I always want another take, you know. <laughs> so um, John, fantastic Irish, you probably, or work with John Conway, and just invent hairs on the gate. I mean, it was always like, oh, that's a hair. <laughs> it was just like, so extreme. Whenever I was like, I knew it didn't work. So, like, that was my, he was my protection. So all the people around the camera were just like, it's all right. Because, and then Tim and Johnny, they had their lovely relationship. You know, they get on so well. So that was difficult. That was a difficult one. I was pregnant too. And so I wasn't on my caffeine that I usually need to act with. And I felt pretty sick. And... And it was, it was a nightmare, the whole thing was, and I was going to sing too. Mm-hmm. And he had never uh, directed a musical before, 
and in fact hates musicals, but he liked that one. So there was a lot that was going on, and I'd forgotten that I have to change when I go on set. I just remember that I can't irritate the hell out of it. I've got to stop talking, basically. And I can't just walk on and assume that the same relationship that we have in the house exists on set. It was basically at home, I'm, I'm chief. Um, <laughs> On set, obviously, he is. Mm. So I just have to be more sensitive. So the next time, which I couldn't, I really didn't believe he'd ever want to work with me again, mm. on um, Alice, uh, he asked me if I wanted to be, which I was so amazed by. But I said, I, but we have to um, be, they're going to be rules. And that's what I did. I just did 10 commandments of how to work together. Which were? Um, on Sweeney, I have to keep stum. <laughs> I have to think before I speak, basically, <laughs> which would help in every area of my life. Um, uh, he has to compliment me. So he can't take me for granted. He's got to give me a, a good, you know, mm -hmm. a compliment, which isn't, oh, that was good, oh, that was fine, or, yeah, I think, yeah, we'll check the gate. But I need to have a bit of a, mm -hmm. you know, compliment like he does to everyone. He's, he's really wonderful to work with mm -hmm. if you're not. If you don't have two children, yes. But um, <laughs> and he is very respectful, so I don't want to, you know. Are so. you home at night? How are the children impacted by that? You know what? I don't. He doesn't. He gets. I would say that he. Um, I mean, directing is so much more, more difficult than it. Mm. Um, uh, it's so all-absorbing. So the both of us working together, I think the kids um, they were okay. I mean, this actually one was inside. So um, Billy was. It was okay, I think. It wasn't too long a shoot. That was. Uh... I thought some of you said it was interesting. I wonder if everybody else felt this too. You said you're more confident, because I could. I can also. I mean, in one's own life, you get more confident at, at times and less confident mm -hmm. at others. Yeah. So do you all feel more confident, mm -hmm. Natalie? Do you feel more confident than when you're younger, or less confident? Or oh yeah, definitely. More? I mean, I think you you start just feeling happy in your own skin a lot more. And, and also, that's I think it takes away a lot of the competition and all that stuff because you know that you can only do what you do and you can't yeah. do what anyone else does. It's like you're not really... It's And it allows you to enjoy everyone else a lot more, too. It's like... And that, do you agree with that? Or do you feel the same? Or Yeah, I do. No, I, I do. I feel more confident. And, but it's funny because there's still... All the fear is still there, too, yeah. and the insecurity and, and wondering, if you know, how the moments are going to go. Um, and for a long time, though, I, when I was doing movies, I felt like I was a stage actress pretending to be a movie actress because it felt very funny to me. It felt very odd to be sitting down and speaking quietly with cameras and <laughs> doing short little scenes. It just felt foreign to me. Uh, but then when, once I got the hang of it, I, I love it. And I love that, that journey and that work of working with the camera, and I love it. It just felt funny to me for a while. Mm -hmm. And going back and forth now and doing plays now, um, now it's uh, the concentration required to do a play. Yeah. It's like, oh my God, how did I do that <laughs> so much? And wow, we're forty minutes into this, and I really have to continue this act. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot, it takes a lot of concentration. No, but I like I like having experience. I do feel, I do feel um, that the the benefits of that, and I love it. But I have just as much, you know, what, what is the word? I mean, when you, when you have an idea in your head, like you were talking about the bullseye, that Clint says, you know, there's a bullseye and you're going, you have an idea in your head about what you might want to do, but then you also know that planning is, is a terrible idea. And, and sort yeah. of, you, so you have to have a sort of plan because of course you'd be insane if you didn't, and yet you also want to capture whatever insanity happens or, little thing happens in the moment that you're in and you want that and so I do feel, it's, I do still feel a lot of um, just nervousness and fear and uh, insecurity and wondering and knowing kind of what's in my head but not quite knowing if, and also there's, as an actress of course, there's so many things that are outside of your control and you know that as an actor. All you can do of course is what you do. Yeah. Nonetheless, you're aware of things around you and you think, uh, that, 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 that's sometimes nervous making. Have you, have you had anybody who's given you advice that you cling to, like the thing that Nicole said, or any, and we talked about mentors earlier on, anybody who really shaped your thinking about your work, any, any one person? Um, I did a picture early on with Milos Forman, 
and mm. I learned a lot from him. Tal mm. Mont. He he was. Um, I mean, I had done one movie by the time that I did the picture with him, but uh, we, it was a period movie, and um, I was very much inexperienced. Colin Firth was in it, and Meg Tilly, and. Um, that was another one I auditioned for a long time to get, and um, he was uh, tough. I mean, you know, there's a kind of Western training of directors, which is very positive and they're very supportive, and and you know, he came from a different school, and also we were very young. I certainly was new to the. I mean, I was almost thirty, but I was new to the movies, and and he was tough. And we would rehearse, and of course we were doing period. And then when you're when you're doing a period thing, then immediately you feel that somehow <laughs> you don't just sit or act. Or somehow, and he would we would be doing all that kind of phony stuff, and he would say, No, 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 natural, be natural. <laughs> and he was right. So he was right. And so I think I learned a lot from him about about that. And also because he was tough. And if you if you said a line in a certain way, like if you said, could you, could you hand me that glass? He would say, could you? He would do it, do you doing it? Could you, could you hand me And he would say, just, just, could you hand me the glass? like, but, but then, um, but, but you know what? He was right. But what's the thing that he taught you that you carried with you? What's the one thing that you've, you've taken from that? Well, there isn't one thing, but just the sense of, just uh, I, I think I needed to learn a lot about that and about um, just the, the, the simplicity of, of talking and listening. And I don't know, I think maybe when, with people are, that are better known, maybe he doesn't do that. I don't know, but Colin and I, we, we bonded. I, he feels like a family to me because we worked on that so long ago and I learned so much from that. But. Um, I got to work with Milos a few years ago and he gave me one of the best directions. You are acting like this is a bad movie, but this is not a bad movie, this is a good movie. <laughs> that, that is very brilliant. <laughs> that is brilliant. <laughs> Who's shaped your work or influenced you the most? Um, I mean, I've worked, I, I, I'm, I'm not sure. I mean, I worked when I was young in Australia with. Um, people like Baz and Jane Campion and um, and I think they have probably because I was casting Jane's student film when she was in film school which I pulled out of. No, <laughs> you're joking. I had to wear a shower cap on my hair and kiss a girl. I was 14 and I was like, I'm not doing that. <laughs> I didn't want to do that. <laughs> you were right. You were right. Yeah. The shower cap or kiss the girl? Yeah. Both. I'm just, I'm just like, no, well, I want to kiss, kiss the girl. Boy. Maybe That's shower why I'm in the no. business. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, I mean, I just had. So, anyways, but she wrote, I remember her writing me a little postcard um, saying, protect your talent. Because um, I think she thought I could get corrupted, which. Probably can, <laughs> probably have at times. I mean, I've had you know a push pull with my whole career where I have done things and for spontaneously and then gone, oh, why did I do that? And then, but my my core, my my absolute pure core is I just love working with actors. That's what I love doing. So there's all the uh, other stuff that sort of flies around and can turn me off and pull, pull, turn me on and all that stuff, but the actual communicating and passing of whatever it is that happens, mm -hmm. I love that. Mm -hmm. And I'll probably love that till, I, till I'm, you know, an old old woman on my deathbed. I just love Yeah, when it works, it's like lightning caught in a bottle, isn't it? Yeah. It's just so magical. It's really fun. So it's if it didn't, and if, and if something changed, I think you said, mentioned teaching or something. What else would you do? Do you ever think, because, uh, I mean, it's a business that's making fewer interesting films. Uh, what do you think? Oh, uh, uh, at the moment, undoubtedly. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> sorry, I'm used to you. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Why are you thinking that? I'm like, get on with it. I mean, it's just. It's harder to get movie made, or there's less. I didn't well, hear exactly the, the, what you said. There's not it, as good the, there, I think if you look at sort of the, the non-young male-oriented type films, 
Yeah. I mean, basically, the kind of oh, foods you're just baking us. <laughs> <laughs> no, the, the, they're they're few because they're they're more expensive. Marketing them costs more than ever. Mo the adult audience is slow to go with them, and, and movie theaters won't hold them. So, um, you know, when I was talking to Scott Rudin um, last week, he was just talking about it, how much harder it's. I and mean, you're talking about Scott Rudin, mm. who can you can do anything to get some of those films off the ground. Mm. Uh, uh, the, the amazing adventure of Cavalier and Clay, which is you a know, prize-winning novel, he still hasn't got off the ground. I think there's so many, also, so many ways um, to, to sell a movie now. I mean, I don't, you know, there's, it's not even when I started, you know, 15 years ago, it's so different now. And, mm -hmm. and um, people really seem to listen to the critics and you know, go to a movie based on whether a critic likes or dislikes a movie. And I, it's such a challenge because um, you know, some critics don't like linear storytelling anymore. And um, you know, I mean, some of my favorite movies are linear. You think of the movies, you know, uh, some of the greats and you're just, they're, they're this, uh, they're, they're real stories. And I find that somewhere it's right now people want like, I don't know, bigger, flashier, you know, or tour. And, and if it's not that, it's not worth your time in but a way. But there's places now besides films. I mean, if you're talking just films, but HBO I think makes amazing things. Absolutely, it's true. And Shetty's much better. I can't wait to see what they're gonna do. I'm actually doing a thing for them next, but I'm like glued to Boardwalk Empire right now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I just think that there's certain places now where the stories that you would hope would have been told um, yeah. and released mm -hmm. on cinema are now being done yeah. that way. So I there's ways that. to... So back to the question, what would you do if you didn't act? You know, I, I really don't know. I mean, I've never really thought about doing anything else. I've wanted to be an actor since I was nine years old. And mm -hmm. I, am, I feel really blessed and lucky to be a, a working actor. And I, I really don't know. I absolutely love my job. And I love it for so many of the myriad reasons that you were all speaking about, you know, when I was listening to you, Annette, say, you know, you're just, the idea of the challenge and sometimes you feel confident, but then you kind of lose that because it's scary. You know, I, every time I get a job, it scares me to death. And, you know, a lot of people who work with me say, oh, Hillary's so prepared and she, I'm prepared because I'm scared out of my wits. <laughs> and, you know, if I don't, you know, and, and I'm also, I, I'm passionate about it. I love to dive into it and kind of understand the character inside and out and the story inside and out. And I, I love finding what's human about that character and finding the little onion layers of that, that person. Um, but really it's, it's, it's a scary, it's scary, you know, but that makes you feel so alive. And, mm -hmm. and like you were saying, collaborating with other artists and learning something new about yourself along the way. I mean, I don't know, there's never been a movie that, or, or something artistic that I've been a part of where I haven't learned something more about myself or kind of blew open my idea of something that I saw so specifically and it's, it's, it's widened my whole existence into, um, I think, being a more loving person, a more accepting person, um, less judgmental, um, and it's really, it's the most amazing job, and I, I really don't know what I'd do without it. It's, it's helped form my being in so many ways. Is there something about the business side of Hollywood that you didn't expect? What surprised you most about the business side of Hollywood being an actress? I didn't know I'd have to be a model. <laughs> <laughs> the photo shoots. I mean, I know that's a silly thing to say, but I really, yeah. that's... Well, you know, Meryl said... I focus so much on the really work, and then all of a sudden, that. I'm in front of a camera, and they're picking my neck length apart, and I'm like, I'm five foot four. I'm certainly not going to look good. <laughs> I'm not going to look tall. There's nothing we can really do about that. And, you know, Meryl said um, she used to just take something out of her closet and go to a premiere. That's right. And now it's true, it's like we're expected to be a model and wear something that no one else has worn and that is the latest. And You don't have to though. I just think we're expected, but well, you really don't have to. I don't think. Yeah. I mean, you can, yeah. you'll get criticized for it. <laughs> yeah, but it's not. <laughs> <laughs> but it doesn't matter. You know, at the end of the day, when we don't, we're not going to be like, oh, you're on the worst yeah. dress list seven times in a row. Yeah. You're not, you know. 
But I do think there is that. Um, it like when I started, yeah. You no, know, when I started, there was no they, people didn't ask. They weren't interested in what you're wearing. Mm -hmm. They did, and you didn't have to have hair and makeup. Yeah. You didn't have to have all the. You know, you didn't have to. to, to you know. At home, I'm such a scrub. I mean, I really am like, <laughs> like it, it like kind of shocking. Yeah. So that whole getting cleaned up and being somebody completely different. Well, that's that kind was, of fun. It's a lot of fun. Sometimes. It's a lot of fun, yeah. except when you're supposed to be yourself, and I'm like. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> I'm not really yeah, being yeah. myself, let's just be honest. <laughs> yeah. How about you, Natalie, because you started very young. Oh, um, yeah, so I guess what's surprising? Um, well, it has changed a lot. I mean, it's, I've been doing this for like 20 years now, I guess. It's <laughs> crazy. Oh, my God. <laughs> um, <laughs> Yeah, and almost. Like 25. Right. <laughs> <laughs> no. Not young. Yeah. Yeah. So um, it's. I think the thing that's definitely changed most is the sort of prying into private life and such. Like it used to be that if you just lived a certain way, you could really be out of the public eye. Like I was lucky enough to go to high school before the sort of explosion of internet and so I was already safely out of that sort of realm I can't even imagine like people who are you know well known and, and in high school now what that having to live through that in public is like because yeah. knowing really what saved. stardom entails would you still want I mean, if you're right back at the beginning of that Nicole would you still choose that path I'd choose to be a director <laughs> but I think to be a director, you've got to have had a camera in your hand since you were, you know, tiny. You've got to have been looking at the world in a particular way. And I didn't have that upbringing. Someone like Jane, my friend, her father put a camera in her hand when she was about five and taught her how to view the world through a frame. And so, and that she was just always, and then write stories and that was it. So, yeah, I would choose that. <laughs> but I'm here, and I'm very, very thrilled to be an actor yeah. as well. But maybe Would just you for the at some point? anonymity of the directing as well. Um, probably not, because I feel that I mean, there's one particular script that I'm. If we can't get the director that I want for it, then I may direct it. But I have to start living it, and I don't have the I don't have that time right now. So and maybe we put it on the back shelf and. It'll percolate and become mine, but right now it's not. It's not in my. It's not in my cells, if that makes sense. Annette, how about you? <laughs> what was the question? Would you still involved <laughs> in a career? In oh, the yeah. Life? oh yeah. Oh <laughs> yeah. Well, I wanted to be on the stage. That's what I really wanted. On the, I wanted when I started, but I was also very naive, and I was. In a, it was a good thing for me. I mean, good in that. It didn't matter that I was very uncultured and it didn't matter that I really hadn't seen very many plays or wasn't very sophisticated because I loved it and I loved the process. It's like what you were talking about, what it really comes down to is working with people. And there's this crazy intimacy that we have with each other when we're working um, that I love and I love that process and that thing doesn't always happen. Sometimes there's acrimony or you're just not that close. but very often you become very close to other people very quickly and that is such a joy and that um, that's why a lot of people get hooked on the theater because that's you know that's what happens when you're a kid and you're in this group and you're doing something and it really isn't I mean eventually when you do it it's exciting but it doesn't have as much um, import when you become professional then you have to think more about, well, how is it all going to turn out? But if you start that way and you kind of work that way a lot, then in a way you still have that inside of you, that it is the process that you love. And mm. so I, that's what I remember. So I wouldn't, uh, you know, I wouldn't have changed that. I, and, I, and I didn't really start doing movies till I was almost 30. So I had the advantage of, you know, coming into it and having a kind of um, skepticism about the, the attention that comes with being in movies that I think I've, I'm grateful for, because I've always felt, but I've also always felt too that you can pretty much also, you don't have to be, you can find privacy, right. even, even, mm -hmm. even if you're 
I mean, I think that the most people, I'm, there, I'm sure there are some exceptions, but if you, if you want to maintain a privacy, mm -hmm. you can. And, and it's not always that it, you know, I mean, there's no one holding a gun to your head. You don't have to be in the movies. You don't have to go out there. If it's unpleasant, then don't do it. And, and, and having a certain amount of attention on your private life is, um, is something that you have to you come to terms with and find a way to, and, and there are times it is, a, it, it is a bit schizophrenic because you know that there's a way that people want to perceive you or that you are perceived and you know that it's not exactly who you are. Mm -hmm. But you kind of just say, you have to learn to say, well, there's, you know, there's only so much I can do and people have ideas and, and uh, you just live with that and you just say, well, I'm just gonna continue doing my work because the work is the important part. I mean, that's a funny thing too about dressing up. I went to a, I went to a very dressy up do the other night and everyone's dressed up and everyone's looking, you know, like we're all dressed up today. Yeah. We have our hair and and I was thinking, you know, it's so funny because the work that we do really has nothing to do with this. When it, you know, a lot of the, the things, I mean, sometimes you play glamorous parts and you get to wear lots of makeup and you're p playing glamorous people in glamorous situations, but um, usually not. Usually you're playing real people in real cir circumstances. Not always, though, but, it, you know, it's both. Hopefully it's both. It's fun to do both. So then it really has nothing to do with the whole, you know, red carpet of it all. Thank you.